One of the most common questions that I've been getting asked recently is what kind of ground baits and what kind of mixes we're going to be using through the winter period. Obviously the water temperature is getting colder now, the water clarity is getting clearer and lots of people are fishing a lot of the similar events to what I'm competing in. I've been getting asked what kind of mixes we're going to be using and why I've been making those decisions and what I've envisaged using over the colder months. This video is really just kind of to answer some of those questions about what kind of mixes I'm going to be using and some of the approaches and some of the feeders and that sort of thing that I'm hoping are going to catch me more fish this winter. Well back in February 2019 I decided that having spent three very happy years with Baytech as a sponsored angler, I decided to go solo as it were. That would obviously mean that I would be able to experiment with lots and lots of different mixes, lots of different ground baits, different brands. And because I wasn't attached to one single company, that would obviously mean that I would be able to report all that back to you and document it. That is something that is gonna be happening over the next few weeks. And I know a lot of people are already aware of my buyer's guide series of videos that's going to be coming and being uploaded to this channel and for those that don't know what that is it's basically going to be an exploration of lots of the ground bait mixes that are out there that are readily available in tackle shops there will be some mixes that you know and there will certainly be some mixes that you don't know as well i've been experimenting over the last few weeks with lots and lots of different ground baits and it's something that is going to continue right the way through the winter. I have been documenting that journey. And so if that is the kind of thing that you're interested in, then this video and this series might be the place for you. Please give it a thumbs up underneath if that's something you want to see. And get subscribed if you don't want to miss that series. Lots of people have been waiting for this series getting rolled out. And I can happily report to you that the launch date for the first video for when it is going to be start getting rolled out onto YouTube is going to be the 1st of December this year. I've been very very busy going through lots and lots of different mixes and before I start talking about my mixes for, for the winter and that sort of thing I just thought I'd quickly show you some of the ground baits that I'm going to be featuring in the new buyer's guide. Well like I say lots of these mixes you've probably already heard of and what I'm going to be doing is kind of showing you the mixes I'm going to be buying them in the shop. Some I openly admit have been sent to me free of charge just to show you guys so it's not really been for me to use in matches as such but it's one you know it's, there are mixes that I've been sent to experiment with just for you so some of these you will have heard of some you won't have some are ones that have been brought to my attention there have been one or two um, certain brands actually out there that I wasn't aware of one of them is Boland and I'm going to be going through the series uh, and, and, and a series of videos about the the full range of ground baits that they um, that they produce i know some of you in certain parts of the country are familiar with boland and they've got some cracking mixes especially the cereal more natural water based mixes um these are from evolved now these are these you know these are ground baits that have been brought to my attention from one or two anglers on the bank this particular sort, I mean, these all come, to, come under the brand Evolved and it's something that I know a lot of people have been using recently. Um, certainly some of the people that I've seen on the bank have been using these mixes and catching fish with them as well. Really sweet, this particular one, I don't even know the name of this particular one, but obviously when, this, when the video rolls out you will have all that information. These are really, really sweet mixes and as you can see there are two versions as far as I'm aware. One is a gold version, it's got a little hole in the bag there, there we go, look at that. <laughs> So there's a gold version and there's obviously green, it's a kind of betaine greeny kind of colour. Um, low feed value by the looks of it. And I'm going to be going out and fishing with these for you. So these are from Evolve. Alright, the packaging for that particular brand looks like that. This is a completely different mix. This is the, um, which is this one? This is the Big River Mix, as it's known. So that's a Big River Mix. It looks a little bit coarser and that looks like it probably will bind better as is you know the the nature of many river mixes so i'm looking forward to getting out with that that's obviously a lighter colored mix okay another one from evolve is this one is called river and drain and as the name suggests it's a dark mix which you know you quite often as associate with with ca canals clearer water um, it's quite a fine mix it looks more like a, a winter mix it's very dark so that one will probably be ideal for testing now that the water clarity um, is a lot clearer. So Evolve is the name of that particular brand. Um, 
I don't know how many grammets are in that range and like I say that is one that I haven't really got onto at the time of filming this so that's one that's going to be getting rolled out over the next week or so. Um, some of the mixers that I have been using that I know a lot of you will have heard of one of my number one winter mixers so far and one that I used last winter as well to a certain extent uh, was some of the, the Ringers range okay this particular one is not one that I've I haven't really used this until the last couple of months and I've really been you know I've been catching fish with it it's been great it's the F1 black Ringers as you can see as the name suggests it's a lovely dark mix it's a sweet this is the um, sweet fish meal um, flavoured one as you can see from the label and that's one that I've been using more than anything and I, I strongly suspect I'm going to be using that quite a lot this winter so I've been out catching fish with that so I can, I can tell you all about that mix um, we've also got Van der Nijn, a nice selection of Van der Nijn. when I was a kid probably the most common and trendiest and more fashionable ground bait brand out there really in England was Van der Nijn. You know, then they obviously disappeared for a few years, but they're still out there. They're still very, very big in Europe. And I've got a selection of mixes there, but here that I'm pretty sure a lot of you will never even have heard of. This particular one, for example, that's the basic feeder. As you can see, it's a, a light colored mix. Um, new branding, you know, if, uh, if you haven't used Van der Nijn for quite a while, when I was a kid, obviously, you know, we always associated the logo and those colours, you know, were just kind of associated with all the top teams. But that's a, another mix that uh, I'm looking forward to getting out with. That one that's a white mix, it's a fine mix. Okay, we've got some more Van der Nijn here. This is one I've already been out with on a commercial. This one is the Super Crush Sweet. Okay, so as you can expect, Van der Nijn, obviously when I first associated with Van der Nijn and when I, when I was you know when I was a kid basically commercials weren't around then you know they weren't as big as what they are now so obviously since then whilst they had all the mixes that we were familiar with using on the natural lakes and natural rivers and, and canals obviously this is a commercial range because over the years they've had to develop more commercially based mixes and that's what I've been out trying for you so quite distinctive packaging as well so that's a super crush sweet um, we've also got a company that I've had quite a little bit to do with, as probably a lot of you will know, and that's Willy Worms. Now, Willy Worms have um, launched their own ground bait range. Some of you will be familiar with it, some won't, and these are mixes that I have already been out with over the last few weeks on certain occasions. Uh, this particular one is Swim Biotic. I will be going through several mixes for each brand, and I've, like I say, I've already got a catalogue of videos for you already. This is the Swim Biotic. Again, it's a fine mix. Nice um, description of the mix on there for you. So quite distinctive packaging, like I say. So a lot of you um, will have seen a lot of this on social media already. So there are already quite a few anglers using those sorts of mixes. We've obviously got dynamite baits. I'm going to be going through some of the dynamite bait mixes. Um, very, very popular. Still got the price tag on. There we go. See, I have been out there buying this stuff so I could try it for you. This particular one is Match Black. It's a brilliant mix. We've used it for quite a long time. Very, very rarely. In fact, I don't think I've ever used it on its own. I've always used it to add it to another mix to, to add, obviously, the qualities to another mix. But um, a nice mix, fine mix. It's dark, very, very fine. Um, and it, it's obviously dark, ideal for this time of year. Okay, and then we've obviously got, we've got Spotted Fin, which I know one or two of you have seen me out on the bank using. This particular one is the Feeder Super Blend. Very, very distinctive packaging, as I'm sure you're, you're all familiar with. Um, spotted fin, you know, it just oozes quality and I know a lot some top anglers are using that and I've been out using it and catching fish with it through um, the back end of the summer really when I started experimenting with this but I've been out catching fish with it purely for this series as well so I hope you're going to be looking forward to seeing some of that like I say I have got others that I don't want to bore you with going through them all now but 1st of December is the date so if you're looking forward to that series and it's the kind of thing you want to just kind of jump on board with and, and follow then please hit subscribe below and give this video a thumbs up just so I can get some feedback and comment below let me know what you'd like me to see uh, you know like me to get out on the bank using because there are bound to be mixes that you know I haven't thought of or just not simply not a chance to get to yet so the series is really going to be about um, me literally going into shops um, looking at the prices of them for you so I'll be telling you how much these mixes are what kind of quantity you're getting for that money basically what the flavors and, and, and any, any ingredient information I can get from 
these um, the, the people that own these companies because I've been getting told about certain ingredients which I'm sure you'll find interesting. I'm also going to be mixing them up in here in the tattle room for you, mixing them up and I've also got some tank tests as well. I've been putting them in water just to look how they break down, whether the water, you know, the colour uh, that washes out of them, how it breaks down, is it quite active, is it inert? And then on most occasions, not for every single ground bait because there are too many to do, but for the majority of the ground baits I'm also then going to be going out onto the bank and catching some or trying to catch some fish for you with the mix because that might just show us what kind of stamp fish they are and there might be something interesting there to learn just from using it and sometimes using it as regards mixing it you learn a little bit extra from the bank so I'm going to be doing all that for you and showing you that throughout the series so if you want to see that please hit subscribe so the main reason why we're here tonight is just to quickly talk about some of the winter mixes that I know a lot of you are hoping to be using this winter and I know you're going to be um, interested to see some of the mixes that I'm using I'm going to kick off initially and just basically say my number one winter mix so far I keep saying winter it's probably still back end of autumn just getting into into winter um, is, has been has been that one you know it's been the ringers mix and that's the one that I've literally been using purely because um, I, I've just got a lot of confidence in it and it does everything I want it to now that's just one thing I just want to touch on now for those people that get kind of can get bob, bogged down with the selection process of choosing ground baits just pick a mix that's going to do the things that you want it to do all right i've got personal preferences for winter and i know other anglers have got their own preferences as well all right but there are common uh, factors across all those decisions across all those anglers and you'll find that the majority of them tend to go for the same qualities in the ground bait that they mix all right so when i name these qualities these qualities probably relate to several different ground bait mixes made by different companies so I'm sure you're gonna um, probably know about a mix that's gonna have all these little qualities in there for you the number one thing for me in winter is the color that's why a nice dark ground bait like that is I've just got super confidence in it and I think it's no coincidence that all the top names if you want to call them that within certainly within feeder fishing but certainly the top anglers no matter what venue they're fishing and what discipline of, um, of fishing they're doing tend to go for dark mixers all right there is the odd wild card the odd maverick out there that says it doesn't make any difference and that's fine you know that that's great but I'm like a lot of anglers I will always go for confidence if I'm going to a venue and if I can take what I think is going to give me the most confidence and that is what I will take and in all my experience all the years on the bank all the winters I've fished I've fished every winter since I was six year old I don't put my tackle away for winter and then just bring it back out again when the sun comes out it's all I've always had better results with dark mixes okay so that's the first choice for me the second choice is the um, the the how much feeds in it and how fine it is now obviously in winter the fish slow down when they slow down they're not swimming about as much they're not using as much energy when they're not using as much energy that means that they don't have to eat as much simple as that all right when fish move around quick they're burning energy they have to eat more and that's what we see in summer and when the water is warmer so in winter reduce the feed levels okay so if you've got a mix or a favorite mix that's got quite a bit of feed in it but you still want to kind of use that mix then you've got two options there all right one of them is yeah you can still use it but you don't feed as much of it because you don't want to be giving them all them freebies all that free bit of bait that's actually already in the mix all right or the other option is just get a nice fine sieve uh, a flower sieve or a maggot riddle or a, well it's have to be finer than that probably like a, a pinky riddle or it depends on the size of, of the um, of the particles that are in the ground bait but you can just sieve them out simple as that, that just sieve them out so you're just left with the fine ground bait okay so you've still got your favorite kind of mix there but you've just reduced the feed that's in it all right other than that just select another mix go out there and try a couple of mixes that have got very low feed in it ground mix like this as you can see just really nice and fine there's virtually nothing in there which then means that you know you're not giving the fish any extra extra feed you know you're just giving them a little bit and hopefully that, that will enhance the chance um, and probability of them finding your hook bait obviously if you do want to feed some bait whether it be chopworm maggots pinkies whatever then obviously you can put that in as and when you feel you know your you think your your swim needs it all right but that's totally in your control all right you can put six maggots in and if you think that's too much then just don't put any more in you know you've got full control over it by doing it that way and the other thing that i look for and it's something that i know a lot of people have heard a lot about over the last few months because several anglers have spoke about it including myself uh, i've banged on about it for quite a while and that's having a mix that's going to allow you to over wet it now if you're not sure what that is it basically means that 
you're over wetting your ground bait just to create a different effect of when that ground bait goes into the water okay as you can imagine with a nice dry ground bait mix you can pack it in your feeder and when it goes in because it's dry you know there's going to be drier particles within the ground bait and they are going to just want to come to the surface all right and that is what we call an active mix all right now obviously you can dampen that down a little bit so you get a bit more of a it's not quite as as active and it's more inert as it were so you can do that but obviously if you've got a mix that can over wet and that basically means as the name suggests putting extra water to it and you're over wetting it then that will create a completely different cloud altogether. It will create what I've always called a wet cloud, if that makes sense. It's a completely different cloud effect from, from what the ground bait is like when, it, when, it's, you know, when it's mixed right or just right or dry, okay? So it, it just means that if you've got a ground bait that will allow you to over wet it, you know, there are three different ways that you can fish with that ground bait, all right? And you can, um, you can alter that within the session. You can, you can um, tailor make it at any stage of the session and just change the consistency of it. Because when it's hard, when it's fishing difficult, when we're just after one, two, three fish in a session, those little changes can often trigger you an extra fish, all right? And if you've got two or three different triggers like that that can trigger extra fish, that's how you can get an edge, all right? That's how you can catch extra fish. And sometimes in winter, you might fish three, four hours, and just by making a quick change like that, like quickly overweighting your ground bait or, or, or just having it a little bit drier and just having something coming off it, that can just get you, it's something different, it might get you one fish. But in winter, when it's hard, that can make all the difference. Now the next thing to think about is your feeders. Now a lot of people have always asked me about feeders and one of the biggest things that they're surprised about is how small some of the feeders are that I use, especially in winter. Now it just makes sense, we're reducing the amount of, of feed we actually want to give the fish, so why not reduce the size of your feeder as well. One of the big crossovers that I've always talked about in feeder fishing is just, if you're not sure about how to feed your swim, just have a look about how you would ideally feed it with a pole, all right? So as you all know, I'm sure whether you fish commercials or not, I'm sure you've seen how people fish for F1s and just fish a pole for, for just for bites in winter, all right? A lot of the time you're putting a little tiny cad pot on, you might put in five, six maggots or pellets, one bowl of ground bait even, one little nugget of ground bait and just fish it out. Now that works, you know, and that works time and time again on those sorts of venues. And, you know, if that is working in that scenario, then why not try and have that crossover into your feeder fishing? All right, so by reducing the size of your feeder, you're kind of doing the same sort of thing. Now, some of the feeders that I've been using over the last few weeks, you know, I, I mean, I've always used um, small feeders just because you can be more active with a small feeder. Because you're only feeding a tiny amount each time, you can have more casts. So you can have periods of activity, you can try and trigger bites just by, you know, if you're not getting bites, just have three quick casts and then go on it again. Now you can't do that with a big feeder because if you did it with a, say if you did it with a feeder that size, for example, can you imagine the amount of bait you're gonna be putting in with that? You know, you might have killed your, killed your swim, you know, within just two or three casts, all right? So in winter, just scale it down scale it down there are loads of different little feeders out there but these are the ones I, well some of the ones i've been using over the last few weeks all right these are just nice little cage feeders they empty quickly um and you can have you know several casts with just ground bait in them easy even and, and you're not feeding anything you're just trying to trigger a bite okay that's the other style that's the, the uh one of the new feeders that we've got coming out in two weeks time nice big holes in the cage as well so they empty quick which is important because you don't want to be leaving bait you know dragging bait as you reel in you don't want to be spreading it all over your swim you want to make sure that that feeder is empty and right where your clip is where you've hit your clip and where you've concentrated your feed all right so just scale your feeders down you know just those two things just having a nice finer ground bait having one that you can uh, change to different consistencies scaling your feeder down all right you can always change your feeder we know that changing your feeder can often trigger bites especially when it's hard you know sometimes you might catch it get a run of fish on a feeder that sort of size and then mid-match you can't get a bite you think oh i don't know what's gone wrong here and it, it's amazing how many times you can switch to a slightly larger feeder just put one of them on have one cast with one of those on and it's amazing just that crash of that going in because it's something different can trigger you an extra fish or it can just draw one or two fish back into your swim if they've drifted off for any reason you know especially on commercials we know and we, it's been proven that fish come to the noise on commercials more often than not they come to the plop i'm not saying you can always catch them and they're you know they're always hungry when they do that but it's a lot of the time most of the time they do do come for a look you know and we've proved it time and time again so quickly making little changes like that 
can trigger you those you know those extra fish that can make all the difference in winter so when I'm talking about those qualities of the ground bait like I say mixes like this for me nice and fine dark if you can over wet them that's an added bonus that's brilliant so whilst I'm not here to tell you which brand is the best because I'm you know I'm not saying anything like that I can tell you what I've used and a lot of you know because you've seen me using them in my live match videos that have been uploaded on this channel that for those that ask is the one that I've been using more than anything um, and I've got a couple of matches coming up over the next two weekends and that is going to be my number one choice just because that's what I'm most confident in confident in at the moment because that's what I've been using all right but anything with those qualities you want a nice dog mix you want one that's got it hasn't got too much feed in it all right and then you want one that you can possibly that you can like um, over wet and just use in various different ways all right the content of fish meal is something that you know I've been asked about for the last two or three years and basically the best bit of advice I can give on that if it's worth advice it's more of an opinion than advice and that is just tone the strength of the fish meal down when the water gets colder and you move into winter all right that's that's the best guideline I've had it's the best thing that I learned over the last three winters or so is just tone it down a little bit mixers like this mixers that are marked up F1 basically that is your guide that's kind of toned down a little bit it's not like in summer some of the bream weights that I had again last summer were I was using certainly the, the summer just gone was with ringers dark um, the green and you know it's a strong mix you know and you can use that when the water's warmer and the fish are feeding more in winter just tone it down you know I might use ringers dark and ringers natural mix them together and that's a more weakened down mix for winter that's what I used in the spring league at Southfield Reservoir this is a toned down mix but this is sweet okay so anything that's toned down in fish meal strength or is a sweet fish meal then that really is the best bit of um, uh, kind of guidance I can give you just from my own experiences okay but that again is something that we're going to go into more detail in on the, the new ground bait series when it's uh, when it's uploaded from the 1st of December well I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of an insight into some of the mixes that I'm going to be using this winter and what I've been using over the last few winters it's just it's not rocket science it's just about using your, your your head that you don't want to be giving the fish too much feed a lot of the time you're fishing for a bite or half a dozen bites and if you keep that kind of frame of mind then if it does turn out to be a better day than you expect and there are more fish there feeding and there are more fish in your peg than what you expected you can always start feeding more bait to keep them happy just kind of feed to the bites that you're getting so if you're on the side of caution you're not going to blow your peg too early and that way you can just feel your way into it and like i say if it suddenly takes off and it turns into a red letter day or you've drawn on some fish just step the feed up and give them more of what they want well thanks for logging on tonight i really hope you're looking forward to the series as much as i'm looking forward to delivering it to you please give this video a thumbs up just to give you you know your appreciation that you do want to see that series and please comment below let me know about some of the mixes that you might want to see and what kind of features you might want me to include in future videos as well in case i've missed anything that would be of interest to you so thanks for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there so you don't miss out on anything and if you want any more videos coaching style videos then you might want to check out my other channel but thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video